A $54 million private jet plane? Come on, man. Let no one deceive you. We got another one. We got another false prophet on the, on the rise in the mist in America, as well as all over the world. This Louisiana televangelist said he asked his congregation to give him $54 million for a private jet plane so we can go all over the world. Then he was quoted as saying that if Jesus came down from heaven today, that he would be in a, in a private jet plane going all over the world preaching the gospel. Lies. Utterly complete false doctrine. Many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. First of all, when you read the Bible, Jesus came humble. He came humbly, meek. He didn't come with no big entourage and he wasn't about considered about riches. He wasn't concerned about riches. And I'm gonna read some scripture where Jesus tell you <laughs> that, that it's, 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 it's for nothing. He said, lay, lay, lay not treasures up for yourself on this world because it's all about spiritual things. It's all about getting to his kingdom. But you got a lot of false prophets like this one today, just the other day, saying that, uh, you know, robbing, robbing the people blind, robbing of their hard earned dollars. Here it, it, it is, they, they basically slave into this, this past and, and many like him. Just wasn't it a couple of years ago that Creflo Dollar, Asked for sixty-four dollars, sixty-four million dollars for a plane or something silly like that. Then you got another one, Joe Olstein. I used to, I used to listen to all of them. But when you find out the facts, you find out that they lie to people, and on top of that, stealing their money. <laughs> Jeremiah twenty-three says, "Woe be unto the pastors that scatter the sheep of my pasture." Open up your Bibles, Isaiah, Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, beginning with verse 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money. Whoa, what? How much money? No money. <laughs> and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. That's clear. Verse 2. Where well, do you spend money for that which is not bread? Whoa! Got a lot, billions of people spending their money to these lying pastors, lying televangelists for that which is not bread because they ain't gonna profit them nothing. They are getting those people in the lake of fire. They get them set up for the lake of fire. Bottom line. They ain't, they ain't telling them to keep the commandments. They ain't keep, tell them to keep the dietary law. They ain't tell them to keep the feast days. And then they go along with all the other things that the world loves. Verse, verse, verse two again. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, mm. and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Verse three. Incline your ear and come unto me. It's the Lord talking by the mouth of Isaiah the prophet. Here and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Go to the New Testament, Matthew 19. Matthew chapter 19, beginning with verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto him, Have ye not read? Oh, that's what we should be telling people today. Have you not read? You got to read it for yourself. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain that's two they twain shall be one flesh hmm. verse six wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore god hath joined together let not man put asunder 
They say unto him, Why did Moses then give command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Okay. Let me skip now because I got a little carried away. Uh, skip down the verse. Okay, straight to the point. Verse 24. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now he said again, right? That man, see, he admonished, that was his second admonition. He admonished him at least the first time. Let's read that. Let's go backwards to, let's see. Go backwards to the very, the very previous verse, verse 23. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm, that's clear. So this televangelist in Louisiana, he lied. <laughs> he straight up lied. If Jesus was to come in the flesh, because when he makes his second coming, he, he, he's not going to be in fleshly form where any old man can kill him. He coming in his full power. Almighty spirit power. But if he was to come in the flesh again, he'd be riding on Southwest Airlines or something like that. He'd be riding on what? American Airlines or something like that. He wouldn't be on no $54 million private jet. I guarantee you that. Didn't, didn't Jesus wash his disciples' feet? He the master, but he washed his disciples' feet. Show you how humble he was. <sighs> Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. You got a lot of people, a lot of people call themselves men and women of God, and they lying on Jesus, the God they supposed to be serving. <laughs> Matthew chapter 8, 1 verse 8, verse 20. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have not where to lay his head. Mm. He ain't had nowhere to sleep. He ain't had no home. He was homeless. But he went out and preached that word. He did his job. Matthew chapter 6. Verses 19 and 20. Verse 19. Lay not, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through or steal. Why he say lay up treasures in heaven? Because your prayers are your sacrifices now. No more animal sacrifices. Your prayers go up to God. And where's God at? Up in heaven. And when you show and prove by doing works and, 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 and doing what you're supposed to do according to what's written, you showing the Lord your, that you want to get into it. You striving to get into his kingdom. But these televangelists, you know, one example, one example of these televangelists and all these other pastors, these lying preachers are lying to people, is because you get, you, they got this, they act like they got this great healing power. Why you got thousands of hospitals everywhere? Ain't nobody getting healed. So they lie. Same chapter, verse 34. Take therefore not no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. That's right. Be content with what you got. These people killing themselves, working two and three jobs, nine to five and nine to five plus to pay off these false prophet pastors to try to keep up with the Joneses. But your pastor riding in a, in a million, a million plus dollar private jet plane. <laughs> Thousand dollar gator shoes. <laughs> Come on, man. You gotta wake up, people. Revelation chapter six. A few more after this and I'll be done. I'm so tired of these false prophets. These lying pastors and preachers taking these taking people's hard-earned money.
and it ain't going to get them nowhere. Solomon tell you, vanity of vanities, because it's good for nothing. Uh, Revelation 6, verse 15, 16, and 17. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, hmm, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? That's Jesus. That's the Messiah. Verse 17, For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Only the ones that's keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments. Only the righteous. Not these lying, lying false prophets, pastors, and preachers. And evangelists. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2 and one more after this. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. They're all on the other side, bro. Over there past, past the little playground. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Freely. Ain't that clear? Revelation 21. And this will be last. Revelation 21, verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. That's the Lord. The beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Boom. Partner. <laughs> Let no man see. I'd be glad when uh, people wake up, come out of these false, false churches come into the truth. Don't the Bible say in the Old Testament and the New Testament, come out of her, my people. Grace and peace multiplies.